North Dakota first. Earlier this month, a North Dakota soldier who died in the attack on Pearl Harbor was finally returned home. KX News was there as radio men second class Floyd Wells was laid to rest at the North Dakota Veterans Cemetery. And tonight, as part of our Veterans Voices series, Tim Olson takes us inside the painstaking process that made his return possible. Floyd Wells has finally come home, greeted and honored by his family and our community. October 1st, 2019 was a special day for the remaining family of Floyd Wells. We have peace and I know that giving us peace, he, Floyd has peace. Wells was born in Cavalier, North Dakota. He chose a career in the Navy over a college scholarship after he graduated high school. And he was still a young man, just 24 years old, when he lost his life on the date that still lives in infamy. December 7th, 1941. His life got cut short in the World War II. And here we are today to honor him. Fast forward nearly 80 years and Radio Man Wells received his final salute back home in North Dakota. But such a ceremony would never have happened without the help of a little known agency, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. This project, we're in the fifth year. That's Carrie Lagarde. She's a forensic anthropologist and the leader of the DPAA's project to identify the remains of service members who died aboard the USS Oklahoma in the attack on Pearl Harbor. The men that died on the USS Oklahoma, um, they were disinterred uh, from Hawaii uh, in 2015. They were kind of briefly looked at in Hawaii and then they were sent here for analysis. Here to a laboratory at Offutt Air Force Base near Omaha, Nebraska. This is where a team of anthropologists, doctors, and researchers are poring over remains that were long ago buried in mass graves at the Punchbowl National Cemetery in Hawaii. We're looking at them to see um, which bones we might be able to put together. Um, so a lot of times that's looking at like the left and the right arm. Um, do, th do these bones look like they belong to the same person? But a certain set of remains didn't match any missing people from the USS Oklahoma. So the scope of the analysis was widened until a DNA match was made. And in June of this year, radio man Floyd Wells was finally identified. His surviving family members were stunned. But it was such a surprise that it was hard to believe. For Carrie Lagarde and her team at the DPAA, it's hard to beat the moment a match is made. We don't get a lot of communication with family members, um, but when we do, um, it's, it can be really emotional, um, and, but it's exciting to be able to, um, to give them um, some answers about their missing loved ones. And for the rest of us, a chance to finally send a hero to his final rest in the place where he belongs. To be able to find out what happened and tell their story. That's the, that's the thing, and that, that's for everybody. I go away with that, with peace in my heart and thankfulness. Tim Olson, KX News. As for the team at the DPAA, their work is never complete. There are still more than 72,000 American soldiers unaccounted for from World War II. And we certainly want to thank our sister station, KMTV in Omaha, for helping us with this story. Stay with us. Still to call on KX News.